Um, so the city of Fremont has a um, basic, I'm done with the learning part. So I thought, I didn't think it would take the whole, let me see which one this is. Just wanna, um, so we can kind of keep track. Um, okay, this was uh, the third question from 2006. Um, so basically, um, again, it mentions that city of Fremont, which is that, um, that, uh, that city they're always mentioning on the FRQs. Sorry, my brain's not working very well today. Um, so Fremont is just a city they're always using on the FRQs. They're always talking about oh. Fremont, um, and, you know, Fremont must be some really um, but it's not the real Fremont. Like there's a Fremont, California, and, and there, it's not that it's just a small city. So don't think that it's like Fremont, California, but it must be have some huge problems. Um, so anyway, the city of Fremont has a large brownfield located along the Fremont River. The brownfield is a former industrial site where contamination by hazardous chemicals impedes redevelopment. The city council is considering two options for reclaiming the brownfield. The first option is excavate and remove the contaminated soil. The second option is decontaminate on the site using vegetation. So that's like that phytoremediation. So uh, for part A, we want to assume the city chooses the first option and says describe two problems that result from removing soil from a brownfield. Right. So um, uh, think about it for a second and see if you can come up with some problems um, for remove that can be caused by removing, um, we'll do three, uh, that can, removing contaminated soil from the brownfield. From what we've talked about so far today, uh, what are some problems that could result? Um, I'll come up with one and then you come up with one and you can type it in the chat box. So what are some problems with, um, with removing stuff from a brownfield? So um, there's a large cost, right? Um, it's very expensive. Yeah, exactly. They'll have to replace the soil with new soil. That's huge, right? Um, so, so um, replacing the soil, right? So they've they've got to buy that soil somewhere. That's going to be um, that's going to be expensive. It's going to be um, labor intensive, right? Um, so that's that's a huge cost or a huge problem. Um, you also um, you could be um, disturbing the site ecologically, right? Um, if you take away that stuff, um, you could cause more erosion. You have to transport these, um, you know, this contaminated soil somewhere, which costs money. Um, any workers that are working on this might um, be exposed to it, and you know that could be a problem. And then again, still the groundwater contamination—it's not going to fix that, right? Because you're not going to be able to get like every single little piece of soil. Okay, so those are some problems with the first method. Let's try the next method. Okay, so now let's say the city council is going to choose the um, the second option. Let's um, it wants us to explain how vegetation could be used to contaminate the soil, and then we need to discuss um, an advantage and a disadvantage. Okay, so we need to explain how this is going to happen. Um, and then we need to have um, an advantage and a disadvantage. And notice they said explain and discuss. So that means we can't just identify. We have we have to talk about it, right? We have to give some sort of um, we have to earn our college credit, basically. Okay. So um, so how would you explain um, that phytoremediation? So um, if I was going to explain the phytoremediation process, I would I would talk about how um, how um, Specific plants are planted, right?
and they take up the contaminant. Yes, exactly. The plants take up the toxic particles. So a disadvantage of using this method is that it's slow. Um, so I would write like this method is slow. Because, you know, plants don't grow quickly. You know, I could talk about how um, the plants still have to be disposed of somehow. Um, yes, exactly. The plants have less habitat destruction. That's perfect. You said, you said disruption. That's even better than what I wrote. Um, because the soil is not being manured. That's what I'm saying. That's perfect. And you would definitely get full points for that because you're explaining why there's less habitat disruption. So that was that was really excellent. Uh, part C says describe and explain an environmental benefit and a societal benefit of bronchial reclamation. So if you remember last time at the very end, um, we talked about societal versus environmental versus economic. So an environmental benefit usually relates to like outside um, the environment. An economic benefit usually relates to like money and societal is to me the most vague. It, it basically relates to like society as a whole. Um, so so if you want to um, come up with environmental, I'll come up with societal since societal comes. Uh, I don't like the societal one, so I'll do that one. And then you can do um, environmental. Yes, yes, excellent. Increases habitat. I'm not good at writing to them. Okay, and then societal benefit might be that um, brownfield reclamation improves property values, right? Because any um, any houses or businesses um, near that site um, will be worth more if there's something nice next to it rather than you know a nasty brownfield site. Um, animals and insects, sorry. I'm I'm struggling today. Um, and then, okay, and then, so this is the last part. Um, I think it should be um, part D, actually, yeah, because the last one will see. But anyway, it, want, it wants us to identify and to describe. So that means we will get a point for identifying and a point for describing, usually, okay? So we can um, identify a method currently used to reduce the production of hazardous waste and a method of legally disposing of hazardous waste. So our identification would be reusing materials. And then, um, so to describe it, you know, we say, um, 
we could talk about how you can reuse batteries, like rechargeable batteries. Um, we could talk about like using the waste for something else. We could talk about how um, a lot of places accept trade-ins for um, hazardous waste and then you'd like recycle it, right? So um, we could do like waste trade-ins. Reusing. Example would be batteries. Um, or using waste for something else. So they say one man's trash is another man's treasure. So um, if you can remember, um, can you remember one of those methods of legally disposing hazardous waste? We had we have three that we talked about tonight. Can you remember maybe one of them? If not, it's okay. You can say I don't remember. And um, I'll, I'll help you out. Yes, exactly. Deep well injection. So um, we could describe that, right? And you could just describe the process of like, um, basically injecting it um, below the groundwater. 